Let's start with, uh, and I think you're coming to us from your new headquarters. Uh, let me ask you about its sustainability uh, credentials, I suppose, but also how it works for a new hybrid working era. Are you, are you building in assumptions about how, office, how full this office will be, how much people will work remotely? Uh, how is it all going to come together? Yeah, good morning again. Uh, good morning uh, to everyone. Um, definitely, we're heading into a completely new phase uh, in uh, working habits and working behaviors. Uh, already when we started building this head office five years ago, we had in mind that uh, occupation of the office uh, will never be above 70% uh, of the max capacity. So we already have in mind uh, hybrid working and people staying at home uh, for a number of days. Um, uh, we're happy uh, for that uh, and we think the sustainability will further uh, support uh, uh, this different style of working. Okay, so Mario, that sustainability is built into this new office of yours. I have a question uh, about underwriting uh, in the oil and gas industry. Uh, what percentage of your revenues comes from underwriting that sector? It's very little, honestly, uh, because we haven't been underwriting energy risks uh, or um, gas producing or even mining over yeah. the past years, uh, honestly, not because of sustainability, but because of profitability of this sector. Um, you know, the big issue about underwriting is the um, overall industry transformation towards sustainable way of producing, um, which is uh, um, tough to do unless uh, more uh, economic incentives will be introduced. And this is why I've been advocating strongly for uh, um, uh, pricing for carbon in productions uh, uh, of the goods. If that doesn't happen... Mm. Um, you know, all industries or companies will not have an incentive to do the proper transformation of their businesses. OK, that's one solution. Or, Mary, you could just stop underwriting the oil and gas industry. Which we do. I mean, we've been cancelling customers. But to be honest, I mean, this is not a great satisfaction because as soon as we cancel a customer, somebody else will underwrite the customer. And so uh, this society doesn't get any better. We feel better ourselves, and uh, we've been publishing the number of customers uh, that uh, we have uh, let go. Uh, but it doesn't help. It doesn't make the planet more sustainable just doing that, unless everybody does it, uh, which is not what's happening today. So I think we need, we'll continue doing that, and we will do our share of that, but it's not enough. We need to do more. Can I ask you about M&A, Mario, and this is something that the insurance sector has seen quite a lot of, and I wanted to get your thoughts. Uh, th th there's a perception perhaps in the markets that maybe you've stayed away from some of the larger uh, transactions that maybe rivals have done. Uh, are you interested in larger transactions? Is it, has it been deliberate to stay away from those? No, we're not. And I think one of the reasons we've been successful over the past years uh, was that uh, we've been very clear that uh, we do have capacity for M&A. We have done opportunistic tactical M&A and um, in, in accretive transactions, but we're not looking for big transactions and we don't want to be distracted. The oil industry uh, needs to reshape, to transform. There is so much yeah. that you have to do uh, in your house to fix it and make it more productive and more profitable that uh, big M&A transactions are, are a huge distraction and don't create value. Um, and I think mm. the market so far has rewarded our position. OK, so maybe bolt-on acquisitions is, is the strategy. In terms of the asset management side of the business, Mario, would you be looking for, for some acquisitions to, to grow your footprint there? Not really. Again, I mean, for, um, we, we don't see acquisitions in asset management as a solution for us. We have been doing a, a very targeted, for example, acquisitions in the fintech space to deliver new digital services to customers. Uh, we acquire a telemedicine company. Uh, we acquire uh, specialized uh, uh, data analytics uh, services in order to provide uh, better um, uh, uh, solutions for the customer needs. Uh, but um, the big uh, visible acquisitions, um, I understand they're very, they're very nice um, and some of the peers uh, go after them, uh, but it's not our philosophy to go after this kind of acquisitions.
not something you're interested in. Can I ask you a question about the UK market, Mario, and opportunity there? Uh, the UK government uh, announced a tax rise and some changes around social care, looking after the elderly and other vulnerable people in society today. The government uh, this week, sorry, the government also indicated there's a role for the private sector here, a role for private insurance. Uh, are you familiar with this? Have you been talking to the government around this topic? Um, I haven't been talking to the government lately myself, uh, but we're very familiar with the UK market. So we're a big player in UK, highly committed. Um, we, we are, um, you know, um, dealing with uh, uh, British business and British customers in UK. We don't have European head offices. We just have a British business. We have been growing very nicely last year and this year uh, with SMEs, with mid-market customers and even with individuals, and we're highly committed to continue growing in the, uh, in the British market. Committed to growing in the, in the British market. Do you see opportunities in, in, in the, for the business, though, around social care, around ensuring people's, uh, people's care in later life in the UK market? We do, um, and we're also very committed to develop uh, health and accident services to um, individuals uh, uh, all across Europe and I would say all across the world. And we believe that uh, the offer that we're building is uh, uh, very innovative and very interesting for the customers and uh, we'd love to see a growth and development also in the UK.